that is at all familiar with our work probably associates what we've done with our fly designs and and, and a lot of the effort, effort that we put into our fly tying with, uh, uh, with the emphasis being on oh, ha matching the hatch with caddisflies or mayflies, aquatic insects, and you know, very specific uh, fishing and very specific purposes with our, with our flies. And uh, what I wanted to do was to, to demonstrate and explain some of the flies that we use for maybe those periods when maybe, maybe there isn't a hatch on the water, something to, uh, uh, you know, just to go with as a searching pattern, uh, something that has some, some versatility in its appeal or, or in its uh, ability to represent a number of different, of different insects. In other words, more of a general approach to, to fly tying and, and uh, fly imitation than, than the specifics that we've dealt with in some of the other, some of the other things that we've done. And uh, these patterns of, some of them we've been around, we've been using them for maybe as much as 20 or 30 years. Others are fairly recent, but they all have one thing in common, and that is that they are, they are very, uh, first of all, easy to tie, and they are very versatile, they're very durable, and uh, we catch a lot of fish on them. And that is what counts, isn't it? Well, in the long run, it does, and and you know, there's there's so many things to be done in fly tying, and uh, we can't afford to allow ourselves to get so so narrowed in our perspective that we don't we don't consider those things. And certain certain flies just seem to have a, a fish catching ability that that I probably can't even explain to you. And so it's it's the results that we've that we've gotten over the years with the flies more than anything else that uh, that I might try to describe as a reason why they are good flies. They just simply catch fish and. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the bottom line. Now here's Renee with his first pattern, the turkey tail nymph. Each fly will be preceded by a recipe of the materials you'll need to tie the fly. This series of flies uh, is a group of patterns that I've selected uh, because uh, over the years they've proven to be durable, they've proven to be effective, and they've been proven to be very, very versatile for many, many occasions that we encounter on on a variety of, of streams and conditions throughout the year. So without uh, any further delay, I'm going to start with a, a nymph pattern that uh, may be somewhat familiar to some people because it, it has a, a fairly close resemblance to a very old and time-proven pattern called the pheasant tail nymph. Now this is tied with turkey tail. And it differs from the pheasant tail in a, in a few ways, mostly in, in, in the fact that it is tied with, with turkey tail fibers instead of pheasant tail fibers. And it's uh, a little bit different coloration. But it is very, very versatile and very, very productive for me. I always begin the, each fly by covering the hook shank with, with tying thread. And we'll begin with the tail of the nymph. And uh, this is a big primary uh, turkey tail feather. And we're going to go to the side of the, of the uh, feather and uh, trim out three or four nice turkey tail fibers. And we're going to use these as the tail. A rule of the thumb, a rule of thumb for tail length on this, on this fly is approximately three quarters of the body of the fly. And 